All right, so looking at this gaming PC, it is an iBuy Power gaming PC computer desktop with uh, AMD Ryzen 5 3600, which is great processor, an AMD Radeon RX 5500 XT, which is just like an RX 580, except it has better power consumption, which we can actually just do a quick little yander at it. And you can see that they pretty much score almost identically across the board, except this one does use less power. So that is pretty neat. I expected more uh, users to have this card by now. Like this one has 600,000, and this one only has 2,600. Whatever. So, to tell you if it's worth it to build or buy, since this is 2021 and everything sucks, <laughs> Uh, the prices of computers have gone up substantially. Building yourself isn't always the best. The downfall of this computer is it only comes with a 240 gigabyte SSD. It is Wi-Fi ready though. So we have to take a gander at this. So right off the bat, you can look at it and tell that it's pretty generic parts. It has a generic deep cool cooler and it looks like this is uh, an A320 or a B, sorry. A420. I don't remember the name of the cheap motherboards, but I'm 100% sure that's what that is. And then the graphics card is obviously a generic looking one that they just throw in there because they don't want to show MSI or something when you don't get MSI and you get an ASRock and people will complain. But uh, yeah, it does only have two RAM slots, so we do know it's a cheaper one. There is three fans and there is decent slits at the back of this by the looks of it to get airflow in so that should be enough to not cause too much negative pressure so the cooling of this should be pretty cool it does have a, have a shroud at the bottom so you can't see what power supply in it but we can assume that it's at least a 500 watt hopefully from a brand new manufacturer I would love if they would show the back of this thing but they don't anyways so if we want to build this ourselves I'll just do it with you guys normally I just do this without i'm not going to bother adding a cpu cooler because the, the ryzen does come with a cpu fan that's probably just as good as the generic deep cool one i am going to go with the cheapest motherboard that's two slots i don't like that i'm going to go with the asrock one it's a newer generation should have no problems a cheap one by eight stick that has decent cl so 2400 at 15 cl that's probably about what you're going to be getting there should be a you should be able to overclock this to 3000 no problem especially if you just turn up that cl from 15 to 16 so we'll go with that cl means the the best way to explain how ram works i guess i should explain this quick so this is the speed of what the ram goes and then the cl is the latency basically how many stops it has to make while picking up information so the higher the uh, the speed the mhz's is better the lower the cl how much latency it has the better so if you can get RAM with lower latency and decently quick speeds, 2400 and up with low CL, you should just go for that. It's usually going to be beneficial, especially if, if your motherboard does lock you at 2600 at tops, you should try to get lower CL because most motherboards will still port lower CL. Next, we have to add the storage, 240. This one is $34, cool. We do need to add a graphics card, which it is the RX 5100 XT. And I'm gonna go with this one because there's a good chance you're not gonna get a great graphics card in this pre-built anyways. Next is the case. I'm gonna go with just a cheap case with RGB fans already installed. Uh no i like this case a lot it's very cheap very easy to build in tons of room i'm going to go with this one 53 bucks it comes with four fans already next power supply like i said before it's probably a generic 500 there is a chance that you might get a 600 but uh i'm gonna go with this one EVGA. Don't like the mustard and ketchup wires, but uh, for that price, 500 bucks, good reviews, I'll go for it. Next, you would have to add the keyboard and mouse, which is around 40 bucks, I would say, for 
a half decent combo and then about ten dollars for a windows 10 code from amazon so it comes up to be 625 we should get a calculator and figure this out so 626 plus windows key we'll say ten dollars just to be safe it's usually about five and then we'll put fifty dollars for the keyboard and mouse and then we have to buy a wi-fi stick usually they're about fifteen so you get about everything that you're getting with this computer if you went to build it yourself for seven hundred dollars and to buy it seven hundred dollars so <laughs> yeah it's kind of weird. The market used to be a lot cheaper to uh, build it yourself, but honestly, like just buying somebody else's and all you need to do for this computer is get another stick of RAM and a hard drive and then stuff it in the bottom down there, hook it up to uh, the cables. You can see that SATA cable right where my mouse is sticking, that silver part on the bigger picture. You just have to plug in the SATA cable to that, plug the hard drive in with power, throw it into the sliding unit, and then Bob's your uncle for the RAM, try to buy a match to what comes in it. If you can't, you can always buy a cheap G-Skill 2x8 DDR4 at 3000 speed for a Ryzen. There's a good chance that this motherboard probably supports at least that high or at least close to. And you'll have a decent gaming rig and it would probably only cost you, I'd say for that, if you had to get all new RAM and a hard drive, probably 60, 60 bucks maybe 70 but yeah 